morning and welcome everybody to uh, the Chamber's next monthly webinar, Adapting to the Digital World, which I'm really excited about today. And I'd like to, first of all, start by acknowledging the traditional owners, the land upon which we meet, the Wadarong people, and pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. I'd also like to say a really big thank you to our platinum partner, Pixeled, and all of our corporate partners and members who allow us to, to do what we do. And for all of our our audience today joining us, uh, it's super important that you keep turning up and thank you for joining us today. And um, this allows us to have great confidence to continue moving forward and doing these great webinars. Today, I have some fantastic guests. Uh, I'd like to introduce them. Jake Monday, the co-founder and CEO of Custom Neon. Welcome, Jake. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Carl Morris, Managing Director of Goop and Director of the Geelong Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Carl. Thank you also for having me. And Beck Connolly, the founder of Botanicals by Lux. Welcome, Beck. Thanks, Ben. So, guys, um, I just thought I'd start off, first of all, just by asking, how are you going? <laughs> As small business owners, uh, it's been a pretty tricky couple of years. Beck, um, how have you found it? Yeah, to be honest, business-wise, we've been good. And I feel very grateful to be able to say that we're a yeah, we're an online e-commerce um, business. So we found during COVID that everyone was, well, a lot of people were sitting on the couch on their phones and shopping and wanting to make themselves feel good and buying skincare, which was, yeah, fabulous. So very grateful. So have you, so you've obviously, business has been, you know, good the last couple of years. Um, have you found that a lot across a lot of online industries? Yeah, I, um, well, it definitely boomed, you know, just went to heights that I could never have imagined. So, and I have found, you know, I think talking to other small business owners that the online space has just really, it's, I guess it's the way of the future. And, mm. and I think it's, um, yeah, the way to go at the moment. It's interesting. Um, I'll come back to you on this, Beck, but you're hundred percent online. Others are kind of integrated, I suppose, and then others aren't doing any at all. So uh, it kind of does relate to your business. Carl, you deal with a lot of businesses. Uh, um, are you finding people are really, you know, really finally moving towards that online space with Gusto? Yes, yes and no. I mean, probably from a website, that whole Google perspective, but uh, the reality is not Not a lot of people are geared up for e-commerce. If you're a plumber, you're a plumber. There's not mm. a lot you can do in that e-commerce space except market and, and promote yourself there. So, and I think during that pandemic, it's it's been ironic because we've got businesses that are so busy they don't know what day it is, whereas others mm. are, you know, they're, they're really hurting and you, you, your heart's got to go out to them and there's not a lot you can do when people aren't allowed out of their houses. Mm. So, um, Can you look at the camera, Carl, too? It might be oh, a bit... Sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, it's a lovely right-hand yeah. side of your face. But um, so, and how are you going as a digital agency? Have you got, you know... Is the phone ringing hot? People are people are getting onto you. Yeah, no, it's been it's been really it has been crazy busy the last two years. And it's a lot of businesses are said as Beck was alluding to us sitting at home, they're looking at their computer, going, "Wow, I need to update my my digital presence." So doing a lot on that front, and then also realising that they've really been left behind. They've almost been behaving like consumers, looking at their own products and services, going, "Yeah, we need we need to update." So if they're not looking at themselves, they've, uh, they're probably largely uh, shopping online. So yep. that, that's, that's been the way of the world. And Jake, how have you found the last couple of years in your business? Um, last couple of years, at the start of the pandemic, it was um, obviously very challenging, um, you know, seeing drops in, in numbers, you know, instantly. Um, I think I would assume most businesses um, you know, felt that pinch um, with everyone panicking. Um, and yeah, we pivoted. Um, we we part of our business, half of our business was events and weddings, um, and uh, neon signs to events and weddings. So as you can imagine, that um, seized. So that's where the drop of revenue um, hit. And and yeah, we we um, we pivoted and started um, targeting just different segments, customer segments, and and started uh, chasing B two B sales. And um, you know, yeah, we're very thankful um, that. Um, we've got a worldwide audience at being an online business. Mm. Um, yeah, we, we grew month on month um, all through 2020 um, and through 2021. Um, so, 
it's um, yeah, we're very blessed, like Beck, to have an online business, um, and you know, seventy percent now of our sales come from the from the US. And I think through the pandemic, other countries were um, able to come out of it quicker, or, or ignored it, or I, I don't know. But um, yeah, we were thankful that we got that worldwide audience. That it wasn't just our local markets here. So take me through. Um... So out of necessity, really, you, you went online or you focused on that online business. What was it like sitting down with your partner and, and you know, working through that challenge? Um, yeah, at the, start, at the start, it was panic. You know, we had to, we tried to work out, we had um, probably at the time, maybe 15 staff. So mm. how, how do we, um, you know, reduce hours and still keep everyone on board? Um, and what, at what point, uh, this revenue loss um, or drop, sorry, do we, you know, can we keep going without, without um, you know, getting rid of our workforce? So, um, yeah, it was um, it was challenging times, but it's, you know, you learn from it and it's it's good that you go through it. It only makes you stronger um, as business owners and um, we come out, we come out the other side better, better for it. Great. Uh, ladies and gentlemen who are joining us in the audience today, as you know, please use the chat or the Q&A function to ask any questions as we move along and, and I'll get to those questions. Um, Beck, are online customers different to face-to-face -to -face customers? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think being a, a skincare company, people do like to yeah, touch and feel things and all of that yeah. kind of stuff. So that at the beginning was one of those things that I was like, how am I going to get around this? You know, I've worked in salons and spas face to face with people for 16 years. How do I go just to being on a phone or computer? Yeah. And I found that just using Instagram uh, on the stories, especially to just educate people and show them and they can sort of I guess, get the vibe through the phone and, um, and yeah, show them on, on me and on customers and things like that. So I think it's all about, yeah, that education and, and showing up online to be able to just, yeah, show them what it's all about rather than, yeah, they can touch and feel it. Yeah. And um, are you finding geographically it started in Geelong and growing out or, or are you really like Jake right across the world now? My goal is to be like Jake and be all across the world. I'm trying to crack into the international market at the moment. Most of it is Australia. We do um, do quite a bit in New Zealand as well. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely the goal is to, to hit those markets internationally. Yeah. And are you having, are you having challenges with things like um, supply and, and, um, and delivery, um, transport? No, not so much anymore. We did during, you know, like 2020, um, we had to change a few things. So you can see that most of our products are in white bottles. We had to change to black for a couple of months, which didn't really suit the <laughs> suit the brand, but it was either that or we would be out of stock for three months and can't. This is our family's business. It's our sole income. So we had to keep making money. And, yeah, so a few little changes like that, but it's all seems to be back on track at the moment. Yep. And do you find your website does most of the heavy lifting or as you mentioned, a lot of your social media, I noticed you've got really large followings. Um, is it mainly, is the, you know, is it mainly social media that's driving sales? Yeah, definitely mainly social media. So we get 88% of our sales from like come across to the website from Instagram. Yep. Um, and I find that, you know, if I'm having a flat day and I don't feel like getting on camera and having a talk, I'll find, you know, sales are still good, but they're not, hi um, whereas yeah. I when I get on and and show my face or show you know some behind the scenes of packing orders um, you can tell it's a real increase in sales and so it's immediate when you put up content it's almost like a um, <clears throat> like a call to action it, it, yeah, it drives absolutely. sales yeah, yeah right. I think um, especially the behind the scenes content I think we are natural creeps we love seeing what's going on in other people's businesses and lives and yeah it's finding that happy medium I don't want to show too much but um, people do definitely like to see that kind of stuff. Jake, you're a little bit different because you're B2B as opposed to B2C. Um, how do you find, you know, producing content and, and how it connects with your customers? Um, yeah, so, uh, B2, so now I guess 50% of our sales are B2C, but okay. and then B2B. So I guess we have worked out what our customer um, segments are. Um, so events, um, uh, home and decor, and business 
So then we just tailor the content to, to our customer segments um, and try and be specific so it's relevant to those, um, you know, the audience that we're trying to, um, you know, reach out to and not be just, um, you know, bland about it or bland about it and try and reach everyone and try and be more specific about it. Mm. Yeah. Last time I spoke to you, um, you showed me it was pre-dumping of that amazing video that you did with Caleb at True South. Um, how did that perform? Well, if you've got two minutes now, we'll show it to Eric Nuckin. Um, <laughs> go up onto the YouTube and have a look. I'm very proud of that um, that video. But um, did, what was your question? I jumped. How, the... how, how did it perform? Have you have you pushed it out through um, SEO? Yeah, so we, we pushed out through mainly um, YouTube and Facebook. Um, so YouTube, we the what we went for is um, the convert not conversion of sales, but conversion of clicks to the website. Um, so it, it is um, it's worked you know very well. We've been able to measure everything that every single dollar that we spent to how it's performed, um, and even just getting comments on the video um, from um, Perez, uh, which is on our his uh, I don't really know him to be honest, but someone famous. Perez Hilton um, and different comments on the, on the YouTube video to actually um, appreciate what we put together that showcases what Custom Neon does in the different customer segments and, and how a neon can be um, memorable um, for your event or home or, or business. And you, you're able to remarket to those people who viewed the video as well? That's right. So we did, um, you know, True South uh, were a fantastic not only just putting a big video together for us, but really kind of saying like, um, you know, that's the hard work. Let's put some small clips together that we can actually use to retarget the people that have actually watched the large video. Um, so there's there's different retargeting and then you can retarget, you know, whether they've watched the full video or only 10 seconds or 30 seconds um, of, of that video. And the good thing about that video is that it's still going to be relevant in, in another 12 months. Uh, and, and two years because um, that's what that's what we do. So, um, yeah, have a look at it if you haven't seen it and uh, add a comment on YouTube so I can uh, see what you think. Yeah, I find it a really good strategy to have a re really big visual asset that can do the heavy lifting and then breadcrumb out some of the other content from it to drag people and, through and that. One yeah. of the main reasons we, we did do that video I'll just add is like, Obviously, being a global business, you have global competitors, and when you have such a strong footprint on the market, you you people copy you. And as Beck probably knows, um, having an online business, there's everyone everyone out there wants to rip you off and, and try and um, do what you do. And um, so we we wanted to put a video out there that really kind of cemented our our place in the market and, and who we are. Yeah. So just to, just to, uh, so people try and copy everything you do, like people in other countries are copying what you do, are they? Is that? Or... Yeah, look, um, all the time. Um, the unfortunate thing with the neon business um, is every single one of us could set one up in a matter of, you know, an hour's time, um, try and market a, a neon sign, get a sale and then pay to get it made. Yeah. Um, you're getting paid up front. So it's not it's not hard. Um yeah. and there's, there's businesses like ours just popping up all the time. So it is a very it is a very crowded market. Um and we we um have always hit the market at the right time, but also got the foundation there to um, keep going. Yeah. Carl, I'll come back to you in a second because I want to I want to um talk a little bit further around some of the SEO. But Beck, are you finding that's the same for you? It's super competitive in your market and you're constantly having people who are replicating or, or challenging your products? Yeah, 100%. It's something that I've learned to put boundaries in place. I like to give a lot of advice and, you know, education and things like that and people like in business and people ask me questions all the time, which is lovely. However, I've definitely had copycats slide into the DMs. They'll ask me questions. They'll buy my products. And then a couple of weeks later, I'll see them try and launch a skincare brand. Obviously, things like that, when you're copying, they don't go very far because you're yeah. always behind. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's one of those things that I've, the first time I was um, probably like, Jake, you know, you see it and you're like, oh my God, like <laughs> it shocks <laughs> you. But now you kind of just like water off a duck's back. You know that you are um, the expert in your field and, and have that foundation, as Jake said. Yeah, cool. Um, Carl, this remarketing thing, and uh, it's it's quite amazing what the what you can do in the background. Um, you effectively a lot of your content marketing builds lists that you can then continue to remarket to that audience, can't you? Yeah, look, I think it's absolutely magic. And just touching, following up on what Jake was saying, and and the way Jake's gone about it, every man and his dog 
latches onto these products and then it's, it's you know, drop shipping or whatever's the latest trend and everyone goes off and does it. But where, and this is nothing where Jake's been so successful, is he hasn't just gone and set up the mechanics of it and understood it. He's now gone and created a brand. Mm. And that branding has come from that remarketing, using the digital tools out there and creating a digital presence, which is incredibly cheap with remarketing and the likes where once you've got that foothold and you know how to leverage it, if you can't leverage it, you, you, you just become another me to uh, uh, product in the market. Whereas I think hats off to Jake because it's just an amazing job. And good on you, Jake. It's, it's an amazing job that you've done. And I think it's that taking that step from me to setting up a Shopify account, turning it on and selling it to actually becoming a brand that's recognised and a go-to for the quality. And it's, it's going back to that whole couple of, um, you know, five P's of strategy and uh, marketing, sorry, and I, I think you've done an awesome job. But I think that remarketing and even at a local level, I'm, I'm huge on it. Um, I honestly believe that uh, governments globally will start outlawing it because it's an opt-out. Once somebody lands on your website, you've embedded a pixel on their browser and you can target them for up to two years aggressively or non-aggressively or as passively. And I think the trick is as long as you a lot of businesses will set the, set up the one creative and run it for several years and bore people to death. Whereas if you adapt to the seasons and the changing trends and uh, huge opportunities, I, I can't talk about it enough. I, I just seriously love it and think small businesses need to get onto it. And the beauty of it is if you start doing this now, uh, the government's 120% digital, very overriding digital adaption policy means it's all 100%, 120% deductible now. And uh, advice from my accountant and talk to your own account is that even your spending on Google Ads, Facebook Pixel, Facebook Ads is now uh, eligible for that 120% uh, deduction. Well, I didn't know that. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and, thanks, <laughs> uh, and look, as, as Carl said, go get your own advice from the accountant. But uh, yes. that's certainly <laughs> worth looking into. Um, so, Carl just on the finance thing um a lot of these initiatives aren't really expensive to get into for businesses are they no that's and that's the crazy thing it's like i used to work at george patterson Bates, very large advertising firm we worked with nab and afl and the large brands you'd set up a strategy and you'd stick to it it was a very big shit whereas because of digital marketing you can jump in and your social media that creating that brand awareness you can change direction and you can pivot very quickly in, in, and I'm, I mean, uh, change direction very, very quickly with your marketing strategy to take hold of current events. Um, you know, and I think that's, again, Jake's been sensational. If somebody even slightly famous has this standing in front of a neon picture, that's ours, we've done it, bang. It's, it's then feeding that uh, influence. And so you're coming off a very light base, but punching way above your weight. Every yeah. small business can do it. Um, Jake, uh, we touched on the fact that, you know, that online not, might not be for everyone or, 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 or even in the sense that people are on a, at different points on, the, on their online journey. I'm interested, um, when you sit around a barbecue and tell people your ideas, there's always those naysayers who say, oh, you, you shouldn't do that. Or um, what kind of comments have you heard over the last couple of years um, when you've talked about moving online? Uh, well, the hard thing is, I've, I've, um, for me, I've, I've done online for maybe eight years ago, and then Carl made one of our first websites, um, you know, going back you know, eight years ago. So for me, um, online's been my game for a long time, um, and I fell, I fell into it and kind of um, fell into like a niche similar to, not similar to Customer Now, but something that did take off and... and um, and went viral. That was a, a dog lovers page that I, that I bought on a Facebook page. And I guess that's the beauty, beautiful thing of being online. It's opportunity. Um, it's an opportunity of just um, having a worldwide audience. Something, you, 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 something can go right. You know, obviously something can go wrong, but there's just so much opportunity. And, and for that dog page that I had, um, it went from 400,000 followers to 4 million followers. Uh, and I to be affiliate marketer to those um, to that page, um, so that was a five thousand dollar investment. Like, I'm, it's just there's so much opportunity online, and you just got to put your toe in, toe in the water and, and give it a go. 
And what do you think are some of the major challenges with going online? Well, I think major challenges is obviously as a global, um, you know, global audience, um, and how do you how do you do it better than than everyone else? Um, I think that's the that's the challenge um, with with, with um, having an online business. Yeah. Yeah. So, Beck, tell us um, tell us what a normal day for you is, uh, given you're 100 percent online and and working from home. Yeah. Um... So this is our spare bedroom. <laughs> so basically it was just me doing the business um, and then I had to bring my husband on full time because I just couldn't do it on my own anymore. So uh, he's just out there putting the bins out actually. So the glamorous life. Um, basically, you know, we get the kids up in the morning, pack a few orders, take them to school, do emails, restock the shelves. Um, I'll chat to manufacturing, whether we're doing product development or restocks and that kind of thing meetings like it's just the basic kind of business I mean as I said before the webinar started we have a thousand orders to pack today so mm. we've got a, wow. a lot to do today um but you know it varies every day every day is absolutely different but I think the the beauty for us of being online is the flexibility you know we can both drop the kids to school we can both yep. pick them up we can you know don't miss out on that kind of stuff and yeah the flexibility has been amazing and the next step for you do you think if you grow, you'll need a facility to be able to work out of? Yeah, so we're definitely bursting at the seams here, um, but just going through some big uh, renovations and moving house and all that kind of thing. So we're keeping it as simple as possible for now, and then we'll buy a commercial space probably next year. Okay. Um, busy life, hey? Everyone's got a busy life at the moment. And so what would you say to businesses who don't have an online presence? I just think absolutely go for it. You know, you don't have to have a large following on socials and things like that to be able to get that reach. I think people love seeing, but the, yeah, as I said, the behind the scenes, learning about the person who is the brand and I think get on there and, you know, you're going to be able to reach a whole new different market than you would have, you know, your traditional kind of advertising. And even if you not don't have an actual website or things like that, I think just through socials you can do a lot on there as well. I started without a website and sold out my first product in 12 hours. So oh, wow. it was just through Instagram DMs. So there's definitely ways around it. I probably wouldn't recommend that business model, but <laughs> there's ways around things. That's um, <coughs> way. I missed that, Jake. What was that? I, just, uh, I said you got to start somewhere. <laughs> just yes, start. Absolutely. That's probably the best advice sometimes, isn't it? Give it a go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Carl, have you seen anything interesting lately that's popped up and you've gone, oh, that's a pretty good idea? Uh, look, it's quite literally, I just look back to saying then between the, uh, your socials and I suppose a website which is designed for Google, which is, I suppose, your, your more traditional business, your local business. Um, Google literally has replaced yellow pages, but just keeping up with Google keeps us with our hands incredibly full. I mean, Google had Penguin and Panda or massive algorithm updates over the years, which really shook the world up. But now at the moment, they're going with a thing called EAT, which is expertise, authority and trust, which you need to display through your website and links to your website, which then helps you rank higher on Google, which makes your phone ring. So realistically, it is keeping up with Google. I think integrations with your CRM are a lot more critical these days, particularly from a local business. If somebody emails you, it needs to dump into your customer relations management tool, your CRM. Uh, there's a plethora of them out there, but you know, the amount of small businesses that are still using a Teledex or their phone as their uh, customer relations management tool, they, they, those days are gone. It's so cheap, it's so easy, it's so reliable. So and from a digital adaption perspective, it's being able to integrate somebody contacts you to be able to call them back, follow them up with a phone call, be there on a timely manner. You know, there's so many tools out there which going through from your zero packages through to your customer relations management, your IT, and then your digital marketing. You know, it, 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 and again, the government's trying to bring us all up to speed. They're trying to incentivise us with that 120% deduction. So you know, it's not just that digital marketing it's digital accounting it's digital crm and it's your it systems yeah it's um it really is a list building and engagement exercise that's that that's really quite phenomenal when you unpack it in the background isn't it yeah so and that and that's the thing it, it is it is really um you know 
as Jay can bet, the, the bigger they get, the, the more open they are for targets to come and hack them, copy them, mimic them. Um, you know, even with Facebook, if I was to set up custom, uh, not custom neon, but set up neon lights, I can go to Facebook and say, hey, I'd like to mimic his audience, and they will do that for me. Um, and but likewise, Jake and Beck, I'm sure, are probably doing the same to others out there. And Chase, it, it, it's it's crazy out there. And just one thing, I think, before it with Jake and Beck, I, I think they're making it, it's almost glossed over the amount of um, knowledge that Jake and Beck have gained from that digital marketing perspective, particularly when you're talking your socials, it's getting that engagement. It's easy to engage by putting up a happy cat snap on a Friday and get lots of likes, but are they going to buy anything off you? And so, and I think Jake and particularly Beck, to have grown the way they have, you, you need to know your way around that digital back end and understand it, and it's evolving. What, what, yeah. they, what they did three months ago, I'm pretty sure Jake could tell you what he did eight months ago, uh, eight years ago when he first started, it just doesn't work anymore. Or it's got to be a lot more advanced, so... Amazing. Uh, Jake, can I ask the final question of you? What's your number one tip for people um, who, are, who are either online or going online? What, what's the number one thing you've learned? Um, I would just say, like, start testing um, and, and putting the tongue in the water with a lot of the social media advertising platforms. Um, you know, have a, have a go at them, find out which one is going to work. And, and a lot of my business that I've started is by doing that, put in... Uh, maybe fifty dollars of ad spend on, say, Facebook, and and seeing that oh, geez, I made one hundred and fifty bucks from that fifty dollars, and and then with no real website, no branding, no nothing, and, and really finding that um, that that can work. So then you can you can then scale that. Um, and another little um, tip that we did when we first started with you know bootstrap and no real marketing was we we put um, um, different ads out on Marketplace and Gumtree. Um, you know, Gumtree and Marketplace, they're free to list your product. You can put your website link in. You can put a product, you put your, your phone number and you're getting free, you know, traffic and free engagement. And um, and a lot of the times Gumtree shows up in Google because of their presence. So yeah. the more places you can put your, you know, brand and links out there, setting up a Google page, setting up a true local, setting up a Yelp, setting out um, all those pages, put your business hours, um, your website, um, you know, that, that's um, some of the tips there. That's a great tip. Really great tip. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Uh, unfortunately, we only have half an hour, as you know, and we could probably talk about this. Carl, you know, you and I have talked about this for hours. So uh, thank you to Jake Monday um, from Custom Neon. Thank you, Jake. No worries. Thanks for having me. Carl Morris from Goop Digital. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Ben. It's been great. And Beck Connolly from Botanicals by Lux. Thank you, Beck. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a great day and good luck with those thousand orders, packing oh those ones. Oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day.